Hey guys, welcome back to Ask Cam Doc. My name's Shane and I'm a final year medical student and neuroscience supervisor at the University of Cambridge. And this is how best to approach your degree. Right, so let's get to it then. Step one, look at past exam questions. I know this sounds a little bit backwards, like we're starting from point C in order to work to point A, but it becomes more important than ever before to focus your reading. And the only way you can do that is to figure out what the exams look for and what they test. Because without that, you're going to be carrying out very unfocused, untargeted, random bits of reading without really knowing if that's going to come up or if it's going to be useful in your final exams. So my advice would be to look at a few past exam questions, uh, get an idea of which lecture series are tested more and they give more weight to, and also figure out what kind of questions they like to ask. That's really, really going to help you in the next few steps that we're going to talk about in terms of you deciding which lecture series you need to go to and also helping you pick out certain key reading materials to carry out this targeted focused reading. Right, so let's move on to step two, choosing your lecture series. In the past, in your first few years of undergraduate training or preclinical years, you had no choice really. You were given a series of lectures throughout the year and everything was examinable and you had to learn everything. However, when you come to your degree year or your intercalation year, things change up a little bit. You essentially get so much freedom and so much variety of lectures that is given to you. And that's great because you get exposed to a breadth of detailed knowledge to do with that topic but also it allows you to choose okay I'm interested in this part of it but I'm not so interested in that part so you can really select which bits you want to continue learning more on and which bits you actually don't want to so choosing which lecture series that you're going to commit to and attend everyone to and also carry out further reading comes down to several things obviously things like enjoyment and interest is very important but at the end of the day, you want to do very well as well. So it's important to consider, actually, is this an easy topic? Is this an easy lecture series that I'm going to kind of cruise through and I understand? Um, or is the lecture very good? Is the lecture materials that are provided very good? Factor all of that in into your discussion and decision. Right, so step three is selecting the key reading materials. So after you've committed to a few lecture series, you essentially have to go away and carry out further reading. I know in the past few years, carrying out further reading wasn't really that essential, wasn't really that important. You can do very well just by sticking to the lecture handouts or the lecture material. However, in your degree year or your intercalation year, you can't just stick and rely to that because one, the lecture material is actually quite rubbish. Um, it's not very good to learn from. It often only gives a very brief overview of that thing and doesn't really give you enough detail to write an essay on. So it's just essential to go away and read anyway in order for you to write any essays. But also in order for you to get additional marks as well, they expect you to put in further reading and additional reading even more this year than ever before. So how can we go about selecting these key reading materials that are going to be high yield? So a few places we can go to do this. Often at the end of a lecture handout, they'll have a overview uh, and they'll also give basically a list of references or a list of uh, different papers that they've cited in the handout or that they think that you should go away and read. So that could be a good starting point and you can find those papers online. However, you could also just go to these essentially scientific paper research search engines. So essentially the Google for scientific paper would be something like PubMed or Google Scholar. So you can go to either of those sites and type in whatever topic you're interested in. So you can search by keyword or you can search by the actual exact paper, author, etc. And it will give you a list of relevant papers. And it's a skill in itself to carry out this targeted search for a 
good paper and finding that and reading that. Obviously that comes with experience and developing more and more practice essentially. My advice would be to always start off with a review paper. So if you've been lectured on a particular topic, try to find a review paper that the lecturer has suggested. Failing that, type in the topic or the keywords into PubMed and find a good recent review article. So what's a review article? A review article essentially looks at all the primary research around that topic, assimilates that information, critically appraises it, or essentially comments on it, and then gives its own opinions and own verdicts. So essentially it's done almost all the job for you. So why go away and read these individual papers when you can read a review and get a good understanding of that topic. So I highly recommend as the first port of call, after you've finished a lecture or a lecture series, go on to PubMed, go on to Google Scholar, type in keywords, find a good review paper, read it and try to make some brief notes on it. Or you can even use the review paper as a good gateway to find the individual research papers that you might want to go and further read. So step four, write essay plans. This is something that you might have already been doing in your previous years, but this year it becomes more important and more essential for you to do than ever before because it is probably the best way to learn. You have been reading all these review papers and lecture material, etc., etc., but the end goal is to be able to write a good essay on that topic. And that requires you to be able to assimilate this information, look at a question, give a targeted and focused answer whilst critically appraising or commenting on the research evidence, suggesting your own opinions and your own verdicts. So the best way would be to write an essay plan. So look at a past exam question, write what topics and what points you want to cover in your essay, pulling in the information from different review papers, different scientific papers, putting it into a good sounding introduction, a main body, a conclusion, etc. is going to help you not only learn that information, not only to make sure the information stays in your mind, but also is going to create a good revision resource for you come closer to the exam. I'd highly recommend carrying out space repetition reading of these essay plans throughout the year to make sure that you are embedding all the information into your mind. So the final step, step five, is now practicing the essay questions and arranging supervisions. So yes, you've wrote, written essay plans throughout the year, fine, but it's another step to go beyond that and actually write the full essay under timed conditions. Another thing to point out here is the guidance available to you this year is far, far less than ever before. No one's gonna be on your back chasing you up for, okay, have you attended this supervision? Why have you not done this supervision work? They aren't gonna be setting you work to do on a weekly basis. It all comes down to you. You have to decide what you need to do that week. You have to decide if you're going to arrange your supervision. So be proactive, be an independent learner. So after you've learned about a topic, after you've read the review papers, after you've assimilated an essay plan, write, try writing that essay under timed conditions. After you've done that, email the lecturer, who is also going to be the supervisor for that topic. And then you essentially turn up to the supervision. They would have marked your essay and you're getting direct feedback from the lecturer who is also going to be the examiner. And they tell you, okay, I like this part, I didn't quite like this, I think your understanding of this is very good and I can clearly see this, but this bit didn't sound like you understood very well, let's talk about that. And then they discuss the things that you didn't understand, opens it up for discussion. And I highly recommend going for as many supervisions as possible because why wouldn't you? They are the lecturers, they are the examiners, and getting to know their style and what they like essentially is the best way for you to write an essay that's going to do the best when it comes to your final exams. So that's just been a quick summary of all the five key points that you need to do in order to do very well in your final degree or your intercalation year. And hopefully you guys have found this very useful and if you have please like, follow and share. Make sure as many medical students as possible finds out about us and knows what we're trying to do. But that's it for me for today, and I'll see you guys next time.